ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار dear brothers and sisters when the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم first uh, received revelation he saw the angel jibril alayhi salam and out of fright he ran back to his wife khadija radiyallahu anha and he was very anxious at the moment and said what's happening to me and out of the many things khadija radiyallahu anha said i wanted to highlight two things that she mentioned that allah will never abandon you because you help the poor and destitute and you always assist those who are stricken with calamities and so in the first moments of islam in the first moments when the quran was revealed even before this moment the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was known to help people was known to be of service to others and this inherent quality of serving others of helping others laid the foundation for his role to guide humanity towards righteousness and the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh today i want to reflect with you on a beautiful character that is umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu anhu the second khalifa followed by or after who came after abu bakr radiyallahu anhu and many of us know umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu anhu as someone who was tough in terms of establishing the rights of Islam however how many of us know this beautiful figure as someone who was also compassionate someone who was so inspirational you know one night Umar ibn al-Khattab and he's the khalifa at this time he's the leader of the muslims and the muslims are much bigger than what they were before And so Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu was surveying the land one night with his companion with his servant Aslam. And he's surveying the area and he comes across a fire in the distance. And he tells Aslam, "Let's go towards that fire. Let's see what that's about." So they go to the fire and they see a lady and her children are crying. And so Umar radiyallahu anhu asks, "What's this all about? What's going on?" So the lady says uh, I'm and by the way the lady does not know she's speaking with Umar ibn al-Khattab at this point. And so the lady is saying that I'm cooking, I have water boiling and I have some stones inside and I'm making it look like I'm cooking something so my children can cry themselves to sleep. And she says that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the judge between me and Umar between me and Umar. and she again she doesn't know she's talking to Umar radiyallahu an and so Umar radiyallahu an gets curious o oh lady may allah have mercy on you why would umar know anything about what you're going through and the woman says why shouldn't he hasn't he assumed responsibility on all of us hasn't he res- assumed responsibility on all of us and umar radiyallahu an didn't say anything he got up and started running and aslam his servant also followed him and umar went to the storage of the muslims at the time and he grabbed some food and he tells aslam help me load it on my back or help me carry this let me carry it and aslam says 
O Amir al Mu'minin, O leader of the believers, let me help you. And Umar ibn al Khattab says, Woe to you. Are you going to be carrying my burden on the day of judgment? And so Umar ibn al Khattab, he takes all the food on his own and he goes back to the lady and Aslam follows him. And so they get back to the area where the lady and the children were and Umar ibn al Khattab. You would think that he has the food, you give the food and you're out. No, Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he cooks the food for them. And Aslam asks, Oh Amir al muminin let me help. And Umar ibn al-Khattab says, no, you stay there. And Aslam says that, and again, this is the leader of the believers. And so Aslam says he sees smoke coming out of Umar ibn al-Khattab's beard because of you know, him blowing into the fire and cooking the food. And he's hard at work. He's getting his hands dirty. He's serving the people. And he doesn't leave her sight. He doesn't leave that area until all of the children are fed, until the lady is satisfied. And again, I want to highlight the lady doesn't know that she's dealing with Umar ibn al-Khattab. And after the children went to sleep, again, Omar didn't leave the scene. He's still there serving the people, serving his people. And the lady says, you deserve to have the position of Khalifa over Omar ibn al-Khattab. And so Omar ibn al-Khattab says, oh lady, may Allah have mercy on you. Don't say anything but good. But if you go to the house of the Khalifa, you will find Omar there. And notice how subtle, how low key, how nuanced this is. Omar radiallahu an helped somebody. And he didn't have to. Again, he is on he has the highest position. He didn't have to get his hands dirty. He had a servant. He could have told him, hey, take care of this. Instead, you see him hard at work helping others. Dear brothers and sisters, this is the extraordinary figure of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. You see, this is the same man who wanted to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this same man... This same man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transformed his heart through Iman, through the gift of Islam. And the greatest of gifts, the greatest of fruits in your Iman is when you are able to serve others, when you are able to go out in service to other people. How many of us, dear brothers and sisters, how many of us have reduced our rituals, our Islam to just mere rituals? to just going up and down. Rather, there's more depth to our religion. In a hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O son of Adam, I fell ill, and you didn't visit me. And the son of Adam will say, that, O oh Allah, how am I supposed to visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, did you not know that so and so was sick, and if you had visited him, you would have found me with him. And it goes on, O oh son of Adam, I asked you for food and you didn't feed me. And the son of Adam says, O oh Allah, how am I supposed to feed you when you are the Lord of the worlds? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that, did you not know so and so was hungry? And if you had fed him, you would have found my reward. You would have found my reward. O oh son of Adam, I was thirsty, and you didn't give me drink. And, and the son of Adam will say, Oh Allah, how am I supposed to give you drink when you're the Lord of the worlds? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that, Did you not know so and so was thirsty? And if you had given him drink, you would have found my reward. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to understand that the fruit of Iman is translated into service. That in racing to put a smile on the face of our brothers and sisters. You know, narrated, Abu Hurairah radiallahu an narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a man saw a dog eating mud and from, from severity of thirst. 
And so the man took a shoe and started filling, up, filling it up with water and kept filling it up with water until the dog was satisfied. And so because of that, Allah approved of his deed and made him enter Jannah. Dear brothers and sisters, this is in service to a dog. Can you imagine the reward of servicing, of giving service to other people? Be it Muslim or non-Muslim. Faith is a noun, it's not a verb. Our faith is not merely just fulfilling the rituals like I mentioned, there is more to it. And re the reason I say that is because the Prophet ﷺ said that أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ The most beloved people to Allah and the hadith doesn't say the most beloved people to Allah is the one that memorizes the most Qur'an, the, the one who knows the most fiqh, the, the one who knows the most aqidah, no. The hadith says أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ The one that is most beloved to Allah is the one that is most beneficial to the people. And the hadith goes on, the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ahabbul a'mali ila Allah sururun tudkhiluhu ala muslim. That the most beloved deed to Allah is the one who makes a muslim happy. And the hadith finishes by saying that, that I walk with a brother to assist him is more beloved to me than that I seclude myself in Masjid Nabawi for a month. And the virtues of doing, of staying in Masjid Nabawi, secluding yourself, doing worship, is so great. And here the Prophet is saying that if you help someone, that's better than doing that. And of course it's open-ended. It doesn't say you have to help him in the most significant way. It says just help somebody, assist him or her. We have to listen to the cries of those who are suffering. It's not right for our hearts to be hard. You know, a man comp complained to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I have a hard heart. And the Prophet ﷺ said that, Go see an orphan and rub your hands on top of his head. And so it's not about merely writing a check, dear brothers and sisters. Of course, that is great, but we have to be able to empathize. We have to be able to feel the pain of others when we serve their cause. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ That you're not going to reach righteousness until you spend out of what you love. So if you want to be elevated, if you want to reach those ranks in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be willing to give your time, you have to be willing to give your energy, you have to be willing to spend your wealth. It's a condition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to have the yaqeen, we have to have the certainty that through our acts of helping others, through our sacrifices, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed reward us. Your brothers and sisters, we live in such a transactional society, meaning that we're always on our best behavior when we have something to gain out of giving someone something. So if we are helping someone, we're always expecting, oh, he's going to help me, or he or she's going to help me back later. Oh, I'm going to get some reward later. You know, I can take advantage of the situation. But how do we treat the one who has nothing to give us back? That is the true test of our sincerity and our mannerisms. You know, in a hadith in Bukhari, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet wasallam said, the one who strives to help the widow and the poor, meaning people who are most likely not going to help you in this world, or you have nothing to gain from them in this world. Yes, we understand the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in this world, most likely we won't get anything back. So the Prophet ﷺ says, the one who does that is, the, is like the one who fights in the way of Allah, someone who is defending the religion, or someone who regularly prays at night and fasts during the day. And I want to go back to, a hadith, to the hadith that I mentioned earlier, and this hadith that, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, in both instances, you see that just helping people are greater than deeds that we consider big. So for example, 
secluding yourself in Masjid Nabawi, fighting in the way of the religion, fasting during the day and praying during the night. What are greater deeds than this? By helping those who are in need. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. Dear brothers and sisters, one final example I want to share today is the story of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, who was also the Khalifa. This is after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an would always notice that Abu Bakr radiallahu an, after Fajr, after Fajr, just notice, that he would go in a way that's opposite to his home. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, he would wonder, he would get curious, why is Abu Bakr radiallahu an going so far into the desert at a, at a direction that's opposite to his house? So Umar ibn al-Khattab one day, you know, he wanted to find out what was going on. So he followed Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And he stayed at a distance so Abu Bakr radiallahu an wouldn't notice him. And so Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an notices that Abu Bakr radiallahu an enters a house. And Umar radiallahu an says that some time passed by. And again, it's the desert, so it gets hot. The sun is already out at this point. And finally, Abu Bakr radiallahu an comes out. And Umar says that he waits until the Abu Bakr radiallahu an gets out of the way, he's, you know, he leaves the scene. So Umar radiallahu an, he knocks on the door that Abu Bakr just went into. And Umar radiallahu an knocks on the door and an elderly woman responds. And this elderly woman is blind. And Umar radiallahu an says, who was the person that came, that came here? And the lady says, I don't know, just someone who does good. Meaning the lady doesn't even know that she's, she's interacting or dealing with Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And Umar radiallahu an says that, well, what does he do? What does he do? And the lady says, you know, he cleans our house, he washes our clothes, he makes us breakfast, grinds our wheat, and he leaves. And Umar asked, do you pay him? Do you pay him? And the lady says, no. No, I don't. And so Umar an begins crying and says that, oh Abu Bakr, you have exhausted your successors. That you've done so much, anybody that comes after you won't even be able to keep up. And actually, you know, after the passing of Abu Bakr an. After Abu Bakr radiallahu anh passes away, Umar ibn al-Khattab took upon the responsibility of serving this lady and, their, um, and the house. And again, this woman is blind. And she says, what happened to your friend? What happened to your friend? And Umar ibn al-Khattab says, what do you mean? Right? How would she know? She's blind. And Abu Bakr, uh, the woman says, your friend, he used to pit the dates. You don't do that. So that goes to show even after the passing of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, how much he used to do for people, how far he would go for others. And dear brothers and sisters, these two examples that I shared today, the example of Umar ibn al-Khattab in the first part of the khutbah and this part of the khutbah, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, 
They were promised paradise. We have not been given that promise. So where does that leave us? How much do we serve others? And again, you answer that between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to tell anybody about that. But Allah gave them a guaranteed ticket to Jannah. We don't have that. Your brothers and sisters, life is full of opportunity, opportunities to help others. Are we taking advantage of those opportunities? And perhaps, perhaps by doing something small, like the man who gave water to the dog, can earn us eternal bliss in the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us beneficial to others. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ جَامِعُ النَّاسِ لِيَوْمِ لَا عَرَيْبَ فِيهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِعَادِ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأقم الصلاة